Welcome back, true believers and all you spectacular Spidey fans, to another very exciting episode of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 101, where in this video, we are once again going to be fully diving into the main ending of Marvel's Spider-Man 2's story and analyze exactly what this means when going forward with an Insomniac Spider-Man universe. And even though there has been quite a lot of heated discussions occurring online pertaining to this ending and exactly what it is implying, I will be thoroughly describing all the details relating to this finale, which will hopefully put all of your worries and misconceptions to rest. So if you're excited to dive into all these details with me, then definitely be sure to thwip that like button and subscribe to the channel for any major Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos in the future. So in case you missed it, I already recently released my own personal ending explain video for Marvel Spider-Man 2, where I did do a complete deep dive of the entire finale section of Marvel Spider-Man 2, and how everything that we saw within the game's ending thoroughly sets up the inevitable Marvel Spider-Man 3, which will more than likely release later down the line. So definitely be sure to check that video out if you haven't already. But for the case of this video, we're actually going to be hearing directly from some of the main writers of Marvel Spider-Man 2 themselves, where all of these statements were gathered within an incredible article that was written by Justin Carter from Gizmodo.com. And even though I will not be reading the entire article, within this video, I'm primarily going to highlight the main sections within the article that do directly relate to the game's ending, as well as what we can expect in the future. So if you do want to read the entire article for yourself, then I will make sure to leave a link to it in the description below. So as the article goes on to say is that Spider-Man 2's writers break down the game's big spoilers. Insomniac Games' Brittany Morris and Ben Arfman on creating the twists and turns throughout Marvel's Spider-Man 2's story campaign. Like the original Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales before it, the recently released Spider-Man 2 is a bombastic superhero journey, with two Spider-Man on hand in Peter Parker and Miles Morales, plus the introductions of Kraven the Hunter and the alien symbiote who will become Venom, the sequel can't help being a bigger beast with more stakes and big plot turns worth talking about. Naturally, we just had to pick the Insomniac Games team's brains about how those decisions were made, and what they could possibly lead to down the line. Days before the game's release, Insomniac's narrative director Ben Arfman and advanced writer Brittany Morris had a spoiler-heavy discussion with io9 about Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which covers both the main story and some side mission content. Now, this entire interview is essentially chock-full of some pretty great questions and answers, but the first question that we're going to kick things off with is in regards to having Insomniac Insomniac make Venom be a playable character. Whereas io9 inquires is that was the playable Venom sequence something you knew right away that you wanted to do? Was it ever possible that we play as proto-Venom earlier in the game? And then the real deal. And as both Morris and Arfman go on to say is that we determined that sequence very early in production and knew it was something we wanted to do. As we were talking about what quote-unquote must have moments need to go into the game, I think we collectively understood that if we have a Venom game, we need to be able to play as him. It'd be such a missed opportunity otherwise. We're game developers, but we're also fans, and so we knew what we wanted, and that players would probably agree that'd be the right move. I remember in the earliest macro conversations with John and Brian Intihar and Ryan Smith that playable Venom was a thing we knew was going to be our act break between Act 2 and and three. Everyone could feel that it would have players' jaws on the floor, and when we started production on it, the team really got behind it right away. The designer on Venom was Shane McCloskey, who worked very closely with a core team to develop his moveset and figure out what the playable space was going to be. It was just one of those things where you could feel everybody getting so enthusiastic and bringing their A-game into it because it was an amazing moment that would make fans lose their shit. Correct! And I am 100% serious when I say that I could not agree with Britney and Ben more. Having Venom in a game as massive as Marvel Spider-Man 2 was shaping up to be, especially knowing that this this was going to be the first ever Spider-Man game that was a complete PlayStation 5 exclusive, as well as simply knowing how massively popular Venom is as a character, it probably would have gone down as one of the biggest missed opportunities within the entire gaming industry if Insomniac did not make Venom playable within Marvel 
Spider-Man 2. And without a doubt, the sequence in which we're actually able to play as Venom for ourselves is easily the best mission within the entire game, and is only managing to get my hopes up even more for a potential Venom spin-off game. But whether or not that's actually going to happen down the line is still yet to be determined. So all of us diehard Venom fans will just have to stay tuned in the meantime. But moving on with the article is that this is where things start to get very divisive amongst Spider-Man fans. But at the same time, I do think that these statements are being highly misinterpreted. Whereas this question from io9 indicates is that you said earlier you basically knew right away that you wanted playable Venom. Does that also apply to ending this game with Miles as the quote-unquote main Spider-Man from now on? And as both Morris and Arfman go on to say, is that it always felt very natural. And I think we all collectively thought it would happen. To me, it shows a great deal of evolution from Miles. At the beginning of the game, we see him struggling to figure out what he wants to do with his life. By the end, we had Miles carrying the burden of saving the city, and also carrying Pete when Pete wasn't strong enough to carry himself at various points. That's what's been so cool about writing a story about two Spider-Men. They're both strong, and one of them can be strong when the other is not. By the end, Miles is more confident and he's like, yeah, I got this. How much worse can things get after what we just went through? Get the G serum ready. ASAP. Back to formula. To echo what Britney said is that the idea of a two Spider-Man story was always really essential to this game. I think pretty early on, we knew that we wanted to have that moment of handing the reins over. And as we developed it, as we started to lay down more track leading up to that moment, it just felt more and more right. I think it was John who wrote that scene in Aunt May's Garage, and it's one of my favorite scenes. The way that Miles intuits exactly what Pete is thinking and stops him from stumbling through trying to hand over the mask. Miles going, you know I got this bro, it's such a great moment between the two of them, and it felt like such a natural conclusion. I'm not sure when specifically we decided to do that, but it always felt like the only way the game could end. Now there is quite a lot to dissect here from both Brittany and Ben's statements. For starters is that yes, it was indicated throughout certain points of the Marvel Spider-Man 2 story that Peter has so much trust and faith within Miles that he believes that he could take care of the entire city by himself. Maybe MJ was right. Why would the city need me when it has you? <laughs> I don't know. This city still looks like a two Spider-Man job to me. But at the same time, I do think that it's very important to point out that neither Ben nor Brittany directly indicated that Peter Parker is done being Spider-Man completely, but rather that Peter wholeheartedly believes in Miles to fully take care of New York City for him, while Peter is personally on break from being Spider-Man after the events of Marvel's Spider-Man 2. So even though Miles himself might be seen as the main Spider-Man for now while Peter is currently on break, I have no doubt in my mind that we will see Peter return as Spider-Man within the inevitable next game with Marvel's Spider-Man 3. especially taking into consideration this one particular statement from Brian Intihar himself. Thinking about the future, not saying anything. Of course. I will, this will, this will be the thing that I guarantee, um, if Spider-Man 1 and Miles were our Iron Man, and this was kind of our civil, Spider-Man 2 was like our civil war, and it's time for the end game. I got so many chills right there, baby. Come on. So yeah, what better way to have an endgame style finale for Insomniac's entire Spider-Man franchise than including the return of both Peter Parker and Miles Morales' as Spider-Man, as well as the inclusion of Cindy Moon as Silk, and most importantly, is facing off against a suite of forever iconic Spider-Man villains, primarily focusing on Norman Osborn as Green Goblin and the return of Dr. Otto Octavius as Dr. Octopus. 
who most notably are characters that Peter has interacted with within Insomniac's universe, as well as have a far more deeper connection to Peter and his own story in comparison to Miles. Who, just to point out, is that Miles has never even met Norman Osborn or Otto Octavius within these games at all. And alongside of all this is that Insomniac's Peter Parker is only 25 years old, where even though he has been Spider-Man for over 10 years at this point, and he definitely deserves a break after everything that he went through, there is absolutely no chance that within the prime of his life that he's done being Spider-Man completely. And alongside of all this is that the main actor who plays Peter Parker within these games of the one and only Yuri Lowenthal has already gone on record stating that he would love to play as Spider-Man forever. And given how much both Insomniac Games themselves as well as all the diehard Spider-Man fans out there thoroughly love Yuri as Peter Parker, I highly doubt that they would want to get rid of him anytime soon. Although, I do think that there is a very likely chance that given these statements from both Ben and Brittany, is that while I fully believe that Peter will return in Marvel's Spider-Man 3, I do think that we could see this possibility coming into fruition, is that Peter Parker might end up dying at the very end of Marvel's Spider-Man 3, which would then make Miles the one and only Spider-Man left with an Insomniac's universe. And while I would be absolutely heartbroken if this ends up happening, I could definitely see it being an extremely emotionally impactful ending for the Insomniac Spider-Man franchise to cap off with, especially knowing that Brian Intar himself is already directly comparing Marvel Spider-Man 3 to that of Avengers Endgame, every single one of us already knows who dies at the end of that film. And if they end up doing that to this version of Peter Parker, who if you don't already know is already my personal favorite version of the character in any form of media, then my soul is going to be utterly crushed. Now to cap things off with this article with an absolutely great question from io9 is that before getting Miles to that point, he gets sidelined as Peter becomes more enmeshed with Harry and later the symbiote. That's clearly by design. But did you ever worry about shortchanging Miles too much? And as Morris and Arfman go on to describe, is that I joined the Spider-Man 2 team maybe about a month into production, and remember being asked how I felt about both Spider-Man. They asked, through a view of a player who didn't know what happens next, if I felt like the distribution between the two leads was okay. There was always a con constant checking in, and going back to our North Star to make sure that we're headed toward the kind of story that we wanted to tell with these two heroes. We always knew that this wasn't a mentor-mentee story. This was about two Spider-Men who are incredibly good at what they do. You see in the opening with Sandman that they've got this solid partnership, which then gets challenged by not just Harry and the symbiote, but also Mr. Negative. All these things are coming in to challenge that core partnership. Throughout development, we pushed and pulled things in different directions, because we pride ourselves on being a team where great ideas can come from anywhere. But we always had this confidence that we were going to do service to both Spider-Man, and tell an exceptional story starring both of them. And for me personally, is that I think that both Ben and Brittany are only half correct. Because even though I do really like a lot of aspects about Miles' character within Marvel Spider-Man 2, as well as the great amount of closure that he got when dealing with Mr. Negative, I do think that above everything else is that Marvel's Spider-Man 2 was genuinely Peter's story. Primarily considering that the entire relationships that Peter has between MJ and Harry is pretty much at the forefront of the entire game's story. Not to mention that Miles himself is almost completely disassociated from the Venom plotline, and barely has any meaningful interactions between Harry Osborn outside of that one phone call. But nonetheless, it is going to be very interesting to see what exactly Insomniac has in store for their next Spider-Man installment. And whether or not Peter or Miles ends up being at the forefront of that next chapter, we are just going to have to wait and see. But with all that said, everybody, is that that's the video I have for all you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think about Miles Morales currently being the main Spider-Man within Insomniac's universe, while Peter is is currently on break. And if it turns out that somehow that Marvel Spider-Man 3 ends up featuring none of Peter Parker, how would you personally feel? Let me know what you think, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy, and for more Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, stay spectacular Spidey fans, and until next time, peace out.